Thank you. Uh, this this presentation was actually put to that's this way. Oh, I got to stay over here. <laughs> I can't walk out of the camera. Uh, put together last fall by uh, Debbie and Jerry Kranz, who used to live in Alpena here, and our former teachers that are retired living in Petoskey now. Um, and so what we did is we put some of the slides I had together and some of the slides they had together. And I was hoping Jerry was going to do the presentation, but the situation came about so he couldn't. And then I said, well, maybe I can do it. And that's why I'm doing the presentation instead of him. Um, and I'm not sure how it's going to go, but we'll give it a try. You can see how big Iceland is. It's not really all that big. And I'm not sure what you're seeing on the slide compared to what I'm seeing on the screen here, but it's pretty close. Uh, up in the far left corner, you see um, Greenland, which is a really big continent compared to Iceland. And I think I can show you that uh, right up here. Now, this is Greenland, the big white part here. And you can see Iceland is quite small compared to Greenland or compared to the United States. And the flight, we drove down to Detroit and took a flight from Detroit to Iceland. It's about a six hour flight, six hours and 15 minutes according to the screen. Uh, so we left late at night with the time changes and everything. Uh, sleeping on a plane is wonderful. We did that, uh, got there in the morning. And this is what Iceland was, founded a thousand years ago by Norwegian seafarers and adventurers. And we have a couple of Norwegian seafarers and adventurers in the, in the audience here. Uh, Scandinavian country. And they believed in elves and trolls seriously when it was first founded. And then Christianity came along and the people that uh, brought in Christianity got rid of all the elves and trolls they thought, but it, there's still a belief there, and we'll see this as we go along. Uh, population of Iceland compared to the United States, and the major city, the big city there is called Reykjavik, and we're going to be talking a lot about Reykjavik because it's a really interesting place to go. The exchange rate, <clears throat> what was unique about the foreign currency was they told us don't bother with any money. Don't bother exchanging any money. Don't bother taking any money with you. Take your credit cards. And every place we went, that's how we, that's all we did was use a credit card. No matter what we purchased, it was by credit card. I never had one piece of their currency in my hands the whole while we were there. Now, we did a Viking cruise, and you're going to see as we go along the ship that we use and some of the things about the ship. And we started in Reykjavik, and we sail. Every night we sail so that in the daytime when we get there, uh, we get off the ship and we do excursions. So the first excursion we went to was uh, in Isfador. But I believe, first of all, we're going to spend a little bit of time around Reykjavik. This is a, a picture from the windshield of a car that Debbie and Jerry rented. And what you see off um, in, the, in the distance there, the closest part where this looks like smoke is coming at you is, is smoke. And there are peat bogs that are constantly burning. And then behind that is a volcano that has erupted, which, we're, which I'm gonna talk about, which is very interesting. Whoops, going the wrong way, here we go. So the city of Reykjavik, this is, this is the hotel that Jerry and Debbie stayed at and their friends. We stayed in a very similar hotel, but on a different uh, part of town. The unique thing about going to a hotel motel in the city of Reykjavik, I thought, um, to give you a credit card, that's pretty normal to get into your rooms today. But once you get in a room, you have to slip the credit card into a container that holds it, which then turns all the lights on. And it was really warm that day in that room which is not normal for Iceland. And there's no air conditioning. So we called a desk and they said, you know, how can we cool the room off? And they said, there's a window, a window which is about this big at the top of the room. 
that had a little remote control button to open up the window, which was great. And then we got changed and we left. And as soon as you pull your cart out of the device, all the electricity goes off and the window closes. Okay, we had no control over that. Um, we, we did a sightseeing tour, which was, this is quite unique. I really enjoyed this. Everybody did. It's a hop on, hop off bus, and you buy a, a ticket when you get on the bus uh, for either one day or two days, 24 hours or 48 hours. And this is the kiosk here next to a building, which I'll talk a little bit about also. This is the route around the city of Reykjavik. Um, and it, it, it stops at all the high points as you go around. You can get on and off the bus, which comes about every, what does it say, every 45 minutes. And they're, they're fairly regular. You don't have to wait too much. Sometimes, though, if there's a lot of people, you want to make sure you get on this bus. But it does hold a lot of people. And you try on a warm day, which this was, a sunny warm day, um, you try to go up on the upper deck because you get to see more and you get to enjoy the atmosphere a little bit more. So that's where we sat. We sat up on top. Um, the, the nice thing about the bus is they give you a speaker and you plug it in and it uh, has several multiple languages. You pick the language you understand. Um, and then you got different attractions. You can get off the bus. When it stops, you can stay on it. This church is the highest point in Reykjavik. Um, and I'll talk quite a bit, a little bit about the uh, church also. And it's all made out of cement and concrete. One of the unique things about Iceland is most of their buildings are made out of rock or basalt, concrete or cement. They have no wood. If there's wood there, they have to import it. There's no wood in that country. And I'll show you what they call a forest also. And this is Jerry standing in front of that church. It's really large. Inside, uh, you, you can go inside. I don't think there was a charge to go inside the church. But if you want to go up to the top, which we did, there's a charge for that. Um, this organ, let me get my notes here. I know Ron wants me to stay in the line here. Um, this is the Lutheran Church, and this organ has what they, what they call, oh, I forget what they call it, but it has 5,700 pipes for the organ. Now, if you've ever been to Paris and gone to the Notre Dame, um, that cathedral has 8,000 pipes, but this isn't too far behind with 5,000 pipes. It, it was truly unbelievable. The picture on the as I'm looking on the left is the front of the church with all the pipes and, the, and then these pipes are in the back of the church. So I, nobody played while we were there, but I can just imagine what a sound that would be. Wow. So uh, they do play periodically, but not every day. And they didn't play on the day we were there. That's a statue of, of Leif Erikson, who was the uh, founder or discovered Iceland, came to Iceland, actually, came to the United States as well and, and, and is exploring. Um, side of the church. Now from the top of the church, this is what you look at. This is overlooking Reykjavik. You can see the ocean in the background. We went up to the top of the church. This is what you see at the top of the church. I forget. Uh, how many bells there are up there, but about 36 to 50 bells up there, all different tones. And if this works correctly, the bells operated electronically. Yes, and you, as you see, this, this is the hammer for the bell. The bell centerpiece which you think would bong up against the bell. <laughs> That's not the way it works. This piece right here, and I'll back it up and you can see it again, uh, is the part that hits the bell. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can. How did you get up there, Ben? Your elevator. And that you have to pay for. It's like $7. Pardon me? I think there are people questions. 
oh, um, how do we get up there? We took an elevator to get up to the top of the tower. It does cost $7 each to go up to the top of the tower. Um, well worth it because the view is like, well, it's the tallest building in Reykjavik. So you can imagine what you can see from the top of that. And then the bells, we did, I, the bells went off every 15 minutes, I think, maybe every 30 minutes the bells would go off. And it'd be different bells going off at each time that they went off. You can see that hammer moving. So that's that's a neat experience. Uh, one of the things about Reykjavik, it's an LBG, what is it, LBGTQ, LGBT, um, friendly city. Very, very open, very, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasant place to go. Very, very nice city. And this is a uh, all walking area. This this is an area where there's no cars allowed, so it's an all walking area. So you're very comfortable walking around this area. This is a museum right here, which is a fantastic museum. Um, it's called Perlan. What, yes. What language do they speak? The question is what language they speak, and they speak Icelandic. I mean that. Uh, uh, when they speak in their language, it's like, what do they say? Uh, it's it's really different. It's it's a kind of like a Norwegian language or maybe like a Finnish language. It has that uh, unusual sound to it that once you become used to it, uh, it's, it's it's sort of normal. But uh, for English speaking people, it's different. Yeah, sculptures that were out in front of this museum. Inside the museum, is, there are several parts to the museum where this is a uh, natural ice cave right here. This went down, um, let's see. Oh, don't remember, but quite a, far, quite a ways down. And it had a lot, it was very interesting. It was cold in there too. Obviously, if you want to maintain the ice, it's going to be cold. And this is Debbie sitting in the, the, the ice chair sculpture that they had there. Uh, was, there were a lot of things to see. It was a lot of fun. Now, what's unique about this picture right here? At the top of the museum, there is a dome, a glass dome structure that revolves. And you can eat there too, like a lot of places have restaurants that revolve. Um, but our second day in Reykjavik, our guide, when we were in the lobby of the hotel, said, come on, look at my computer screen. And she had a computer screen like I have sitting in front of me. And there was a small puffs of smoke coming from this volcano at that point. She said, we have a volcano eruption. You know, and to those of us who are on this island, or it makes you kind of nervous, like <laughs> volcano. No, she said, ah, that's, don't even worry about it. She said, that's 10 miles away. And... It's not a problem. And um, they have cameras set up all throughout the island, especially where there's a position of volcanoes that have erupted or there's disturbances or things going on. So they had cameras <clears throat> right near this also, but we aren't near it. We're 10 miles away from it. So you can see that's a bit of a, and this was the second day now, the second day it was really starting to come up. And what bothered me or what made me nervous is <clears throat> that's in the direction of the airport. And in like two days, I want to fly out of here. And they said, oh, don't worry about it. I said, the wind's blowing the other way. Well, we know what winds are like. I can go this way. No controlling that. So I, this is always a concern of mine. Uh, no, no, just a little bit. That those, That's not the ocean right there. That's just inlets. Um. And so what you see on the farther side is land, uninhabitable land. It's all rock. It's just gross rock. It's sharp. It's, uh, you'll see pictures close up. And then so what's behind that is all land also. There's no ocean there. The ocean's off to the far right as you look at this picture. 
This house right here is interesting. This one here, I've got a couple notes on that, is where Gorbachev, I, I keep stepping out of the way of camera here, Gorbachev and, and Reagan had uh, their meeting, and they, that's what started the process to end the Cold War, the nuclear pro proliferation where they said, we, we've got to stop building interconnect, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and this is where they met to begin that process, um, 1986. That's when it took place. And I'm not sure how to pronounce that. This right here is a unique sculpture. Uh, it's made out of maybe stainless steel, but it, what it's showing, what it's trying to depict are the Vikings sailing um, and the exploring because that's what they did. They did a lot of exploring and, and discovered new land. Um, it's very, very pretty. Now, one thing that I picked up on walking around Iceland right away was how many electric cars they have. Now, this is not an electric car, obviously, but this is an electric scooter. But they have a, more electric cars in Iceland than I have ever seen. And I'll talk a little bit about why in a minute also. So electric scooters are everywhere. They're just everywhere. When you're walking on a sidewalk, there's a center line down the sidewalk. And if you're going this way, you better be on the right side of that center line because these scooters come along on the left side and you don't hear them coming. And they just go, they, you know, they go fast. And they could do you some major damage if they ran into you. Learn that really quick. And if you want to use a scooter, you just walk up to uh, an area where there's a lot of scooters. You take your credit card, scan your credit card, get on a scooter, go wherever you want to, leave it wherever you want to. You don't have to bring it back. And, and you don't have to bring it to another kiosk like this to uh, leave the scooter. <laughs> there's scooters everywhere. And what they do is they hire somebody at night. This person goes around, collects all the scooters, and puts them back where they belong. Uh, yeah, a lot of scooters there. I did not. I would. I have learned from experience that um, you can get hurt real badly on these things, and a lot of tourists do, and not only in this country, because the electric scooters is prevalent in every country and every major city now. They are just, when we were in um, New Orleans, that's the first, my first experience in dodging electric scooters. And yeah, they're just they're they're used a lot, especially in this country, um, but everywhere. Now, what you see is uh, things that are occurring around Alpina. You're going to see a lot of buildings with a lot of art painted on the buildings, um, and the buildings are multicolored, like you're looking at. That's that's a popular theme throughout Iceland. They they paint their buildings in multicolors. They're very bright. Again, some pop art depicting a lot of things that go on in Iceland. Hot dog stands. <laughs> Hot dog stands are big in Reykjavik. This is the line at around lunchtime um, to get a hot dog. And, Naturally, they're popular, so we had to try them. And they're made out of different kinds of meat and even fish. Now, this is Jerry. He had to try one of these. <clears throat> uh, they use a special mustard in that. This, again, is in the city. They call this a 101 street. But, again, no cars are allowed. This is all walking. Uh, it's, a, it's an area where <clears throat> there are many shops. And walking is encouraged. You have to, if you want to get from point A to point B, uh, through here, you just, it's all walking. There are no cars. And it's a pretty big area. We had to go into a pub and try their local beer, which was very, very good. And you know, it wasn't until 19... 86, I think, 
where they allowed beer to come into the country. Before that, beer was illegal in Iceland. And it was around, I think it was 1986, year, I could be wrong, but it wasn't that long ago where they started allowing beer and making their own beer within the country. Very good, very good. <clears throat> yes, it was. Um, this building right here is the main building in Reykjavik. They have concerts in this building. We did go into it as well, but the architecture of the building is is really unique. It's it's kind of kind of goes off on a triangle. Um, they have restaurants and everything inside. We we spent some time. You can see how unique it is. And they tried to design it so that it kind of represented the volcanic culture or, or scenic culture that's around the city. So it kind of resembled that. That's what the architect tried to do. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why they didn't allow beer into the country before that. Uh, and I don't know if it was all alcohol, but I know they just mentioned beer, you know, so that maybe it was all alcohol at that point was then allowed into the country. But I don't know that. But I do know that beer wasn't for a long time. Maybe it's because of the um, alcohol that they made in the country. They wanted to sell you that instead of selling you beer, which wasn't made in the country. Obviously, it is right now. Excuse me a second. I got to get my refreshment. Uh, well, I've been told that, but <laughs> uh, having never tried it, I don't know for sure. We went out of the city. We did a tour out of the city. We went by bus. And we went to a, well, first of all, this is, this is different. The Blue Lagoon is, is probably the most famous place in Iceland for going to take a swim in a hot bath, maybe not. It's not a bath, but um, you have to walk to it. You can see the terrain. You can see how uh, really uh, rugged it is. This, these rocks are just rugged. <clears throat> this is a pool. This is heated by thermal waters, which comes from underground. Um, they use this steam and water to heat the houses, heat the swimming pool, uh, create electricity. And then the, the water after it's done all that, they use to heat the pool. So everything is thermal. It, it, you don't pay for any of the, uh, any of the electricity act. Now, this is Jerry and Debbie, and you can see Jerry is kind of mad. You can see the smoke, smoke's coming out of his head, you know. He's, uh, but, but he's smiling for the sake of Debbie. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is what happens to the rocks after the, the steam and, and uh, the residue from the steam settles down. It just it puts moss, covers these rocks with moss. And this is just some of the uh terrain around there with all the glacial pools no no that was not the, the, um these are just what's surrounding that area <clears throat> as you walk to the blue lagoon this is the kind of terrain you would walk around there'd be a hard surface and then water and uh yeah it, it's a okay a little bit about the cruise ship uh, how many of you have ever traveled with Viking? Okay. Well, Viking does, first of all, they did, uh, if you watch PBS, you'll see them advertise a lot, but they did river cruises first. Uh, that's how they become, that's how they became uh, well known as a cruise company. Uh, they have, they would cruise up and down the major rivers throughout Europe. The first cruise we took was from Budapest up to Amsterdam. That was a 14 day cruise and it was wonderful. But a friend of mine went a year later, <clears throat> wasn't so wonderful. So the only reason I'm bringing this up is 
if you were thinking of doing a river cruise, I would really, really investigate it beforehand because what's happening to the depth of the water that we are in. So the water is decreasing and decreasing to the point where the ships, if they're full of passengers, where uh, the ground, the, the water level was too low and they had to let the people off at every port. They had to bus them to the next port. Then they took the boat, went up to the next port. So you stayed on the boat every night, but you never cruised on the boat. And half the fun is being on the boat, going through the locks. <clears throat> he was very disappointed in it, and I don't blame him. That was quite disappointing. So they went, they have been building ocean uh, ships right now, Viking has. And now they do uh, cruises everywhere in the world. The ship that comes into Alpina is a Viking ship. One of the things they have on that ship are two submarines. And up until maybe this year, they have not been allowed to use the submarines. And Al probably knows more about that than I do, but maybe they'll be allowed to use them this year. And it was some kind of international law against it that they couldn't use the submarines here. But that same ship goes down to Antarctica. And in the process of somewhere along the line, they do use the submarines for exploration purposes. But that's the ship, one of the ships Viking uses that goes to Antarctica in our winter. And then uh, very shortly, the ship will be coming back into Alpina. I think there are 26, 26 uh, cruises that are going to come into Alpina this summer. And this is either the most popular or second most popular port, according to what everybody fills out when you leave a Viking ship. They want to report on uh, how the how the trip was for you, and Alpina is a very very popular stop, thanks to people like Al who takes them on tours, um, all around Alpina. And that's the size of the ship. It, 928 passengers, 465 crew. That's a lot of people. There are people there to help you all the time. Um, we went, this is a, um, this is near the water. One of the buildings in the, the art again that they are using is be, becoming very popular. That's, these are two Coast Guard ships. If you were going by the land, and if you wanted to do a land, you know, if, if you wanted to do see Iceland just by land, this is one of the tours that you could do uh, called the Golden Circle Tour, which they say it's three hours and 31 minutes, figure on eight hours. It's, there, there's no freeways on the island. It's uh, curvy, twisty, difficult roads to drive on. The driver of the car sees nothing because you're concentrating on not going in the ditch. Um, so going by car is another, another way to do it. This is, this is probably the most interesting thing I saw, a geothermal exhibition. It's kind of like a museum right here, but let me explain what's going on. <clears throat> These are electrical generators right here. They are powered by uh, the steam coming out of the ground. The steam coming out of the ground turns these turbines and it, the hot water from this plant and the electricity from this plant go to Reykjavik. A Reykjavik, what did we say? It was 300,000 people live there. Powers all the electricity, all the hot water for that entire city. For every building in that city, they get their electricity and their hot water from this plant. And this plant is probably 20 miles away from the city. Um, our tour guide, when we were leaving, she lived in a suburb of Reykjavik, and we were probably two miles out of Reykjavik. She said, I live in this area here. She said, I hate my driveway, I hate my garage, I hate my house, excuse me, my pool, and it cost me $45 a month, year round. Yes, it's, well, what the, some engineer with a lot of smarts did some exploration and figured out that 
underneath this area is the best area to put this geothermal plant that we figured that there's enough energies underneath this area stored underneath this area to be able to do this and they were right they were they were very successful in doing that so all of that comes from underground yeah it's pretty impressive yes and iceland is a continent in flux so um they they could run out i would probably guess they won't <clears throat> but what's to say the earth couldn't shift you know volcanoes are <laughs> everywhere on this island and the fault line is moving and we'll we'll see that in a little bit too so yeah taking a chance on doing it but but so far it's phenomenal these falls right here <clears throat> are a a uh, high point in a tourist attraction. They're amazing. They're huge. What, the day we went there, and you'll see a, a slide of Marge and I, my wife and myself. Um, it was cold. It was it was windy, cold and windy. I knew that could be a possibility, so I brought a, a long a jacket with a hood and uh, uh, insulation, and I was okay. But it was a cold, cold day. Pardon me? Uh, September and August. August and September. And the weather was very, very nice. You could see the sky. And I mean, we didn't, I don't think we had a day of rain. If we did, it was very light and it didn't last. This is kind of like Niagara Falls, maybe, but Niagara Falls is in one place. This one goes on and on and on. Canyons. What proportion of the island is this cold? Is what? What proportion of the island is the cold area? Well, um, from one of the first or second slides, it showed Iceland from a satellite view, and you could see portions of it that were white. That's um, frozen all the time. It's like a glacier that doesn't melt. <clears throat> but that's high elevation uh, in one part of the island, kind of like uh, the eastern part of one of the island. We yeah, these falls all glacier melt? I'm sorry? Where's the water from the falls? Oh, glacier melt, correct, correct, yes. Oh, I want to back up and talk about uh, where to go. Oh, I lost it, but there was a picture, a slide of a path where people were walking <clears throat> and standing out. Maybe it'll come up. Yeah, I'm backing up right now. Oh, here are, <clears throat> here are some people right there. Um, where did I see them right here? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, there was. <laughs> it uh, doesn't show me every slide that I originally wanted to show you. This mist that's coming up is constant and it's cold. It's like standing in a cold shower. This is an area here. It's kind of like Yellowstone. Uh, you got a sulfur smell. Uh, ground is bubbling all over, and it's it's warm. <clears throat> Some of these fumes are toxic, and all of the water is superheated, superheated. You don't want to try to step into this water because it is very very hot, scalding hot. Now, this is their famous geyser. 
And most of you have seen Yellowstone and you've been there and seen the geyser. It's pretty phenomenal. And it's also predictable. It will, you know, on a, you can set your watch by when this geysers are going to go off in Yellowstone. This one, not so much. It's, it, uh, it doesn't stick to the clock very well. But this is uh, a picture of it when it's not bubbling and boiling. This one is when it's starting to go. So it's getting ready. But you're there with your camera. You could be there 10 minutes with your camera <laughs> on waiting for it to go. Because it goes like, that's it. And this is surrounded by people. Everybody is surrounded. You can get a lot closer on this to this one than Yellowstone. And that's it. <laughs> it's like, what? I've been here for 20 minutes waiting for this. But that's all right. Does the steam or the mist get into your face? If you were downwind of it, it would. Yes. Um, like you can see how the, the fumes are going in one particular direction. So you don't want to be in that direction because it's always boiling. And you can see where the steam and the smoke is going to go. This, this is all steam. Um, and it's pungent, very smelly, too. But this whole, this whole area, this whole valley is surrounded by uh, this superheated water. It's, uh, the ground is yuck. Now, this is interesting. Um, one of the things I learned is Iceland basically has no trees. This is the extent of their forest right here. The trees don't go very tall, and there aren't very many of them. The, the, the joke around there is, if you're lost in the forest, just stand up and look around. Because <laughs> the trees are, are so short. Um, and that becomes a problem for building, you know. Yeah. No wood, you got to build it out of something. So they uh, learned how to make all the natural, using all the natural products that are in the country itself and use brick and concrete and blocks and stone and rock. This is, um, let's see if I can find it here. There is a face in that rock to the left there. So, yeah, you can picture what you want, make it like a kind of a face of a horse, maybe. <laughs> um, the tectonic plates, this, this country is constant movement and it, it's shifting. So as I look at this right here, this part of the land used to be connected to that part of the land. And the valley in between is caused because these plates have been moving apart and they're in constant motion. Um, they said that the motion is such that it moves as fast as your fingernails grow per year. <laughs> so there's always, they're always moving apart. In order to get by road through this country, they found it to be extremely difficult. In the wintertime, it's very slippery, very icy. So they build a lot of tunnels. This tunnel is four miles long. Uh, you go into it, and uh, and they're very common uh, in Iceland. You can see the uh, snow on the peaks of, of the mountains here. Um, and this is, like I said, the end of August and beginning of September. Yes. If, if, the, if those tectonic plates, plates and rocks are shifting, do they have trouble with the tunnels falling apart? Apparently not. Apparently not. I, I nobody ever brought that up, but they must design that. We have a highway engineer here. They must design it for movement possibilities. 
because they know it's going to happen. So somehow they could build it with the thought that it could move a little bit without any structural damage or structural damage that they can fix. I don't know. Let me see what my notes say here. Okay, let's see. This is a small village. About, I don't know, 650 people live there. It's a fishing village. That's how they made their living. Uh, years gone by is all, all fishing. Well, then the fish uh, population declined to the point where they had to come up with something else. So they came up with tourism. And they really welcome all the tourists with open arms. This building here is the farthest west point of Iceland. Um, it's a lighthouse. Now, this is the buildings that they had originally. We go back a thousand years. They would. This is the kind of building that they would put up. Stone, grass, sod. And the unique thing is they would build it so that they had a tunnel you didn't have to go outside. You had a tunnel from this building to this. I don't know if you can see that, but between the two buildings, they have tunnels built. And sometimes they'll have like one, two, three, four, five, six. They'll have several of these in a row. So that, and they're all interconnected underground because the winters there are just beastly. And uh, this, is, this is set up so you could see what it would be like, you know, 100, 200 years ago. This gal right here had a seal skin outfit on. Um, her, her gloves were quite unique because they had two thumbs in them. Each glove had two thumbs. So as they're working, when one thumb either got too cold or worn out, got a hole in it, they could switch to another thumb without having to take the gloves off. It was very, very hard. That's the, that's the boats they, that they used for fishing also. They had a museum that had some um, videos, movies of these people actually fishing probably when first movies were first developed and they are quite incredible. This flower is called a lupine. Um, in, the, in the middle 70s, a person went to Alaska. The, the soil on Iceland is horrible. And he wanted something to a plant that would grow in this soil and enrich the soil. So they went. he went up to Alaska to see what they had. And this lupine, which is a flower, looked to be the answer. So he brought that back and, he, and they planted it in the country of Iceland, which now is a mistake because, whoops, lupine is everywhere. The whole country is purple. It's beautiful, but it takes over everything. The lupine takes over everything. Um, it's a pretty flower, but they're not happy with it. More waterfalls. I'm going to go to this one right here. <clears throat> the uh, demarcation line right there is like uh, where you like the equator, only the opposite of the equator above the Arctic Circle. And as we sailed, we had to sail across that line because Iceland's kind of, uh, you're not seeing that. So you could kind of see where Iceland is right here. And we had to sail on the other side of that line and come back. Uh, so we got a certificate that we sailed above the Arctic Circle. Horses are really popular in Iceland. <clears throat> It's a special breed of horse. Uh, it's very friendly. I never got close. I'm allergic to horses. I never got close to a horse. Uh, Debbie and Jerry took this picture. Um, 
but they're a little they're a little smaller and adapt to this climate beautifully and are very, very friendly. Yes, yes, they use them for food. The question was, do they use them for food? And the answer is yes. Not as much as they used to. Uh, nine months, at least. The winter, how long is the winter? I'd say, yeah, pretty good nine months. Just like we used to have. Some of this I'm just going to skip over. Um, let me see. That place is unique in what way? <clears throat> this was a, a an island that we stopped. An island? I think it was an island. Let me look on my map here. No, it wasn't an island. It was the uh, eastern part of Iceland. Um, but it, we stopped there. Volcan volcanic action is very, is huge there. And the rock is, uh, when the volcano went off and went settled back down, this this is the kind of terrain that, 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 was, that was left after the volcano went away. So... Um, this this looks like a troll with the nose and everything. This one here, and they yeah yeah a lot of people believe in trolls on Iceland, and uh, so they leave that alone. This this um. Uh, across this plain right here, that's that nothing can grow there. It's all uh, kind of like sand. Um, really, uh, a terrain that nobody can use except to walk up and walk back down it. Looks like a lovely place to go swimming, isn't it? Not so much. This is this is all, all created by the volcanic volcanic action. Um, this rock pile of rocks there, basalt, is constantly growing from the steam and uh, water that's coming out of the underground area, and it's really smelly and very hot. This is in the eastern part of Iceland. Yes, it is. Correct. Yep. So the geothermal is, is really all over the whole country. It, it is. It, yes, it is. It, it really is. But, you know, I didn't notice the smell at all when we were in Reykjavik. Um, in fact, if you're not downwind of it, you don't smell it at all even if uh, when you're close to something like this. There's a lot of rivers and falls, big ones. Now that's me and Marge and the God of Fast Falls and that was the day I said it was cold, and uh, the mist coming off the from the falls created it to be colder. It was damp, and um, but it was fun, and we had to walk a long way. You could see the you see the trail uh, up in here where the people are walking. Well, we walked around to come down to here, so it's quite a long walk, uh, not a not an unpleasant walk, but when you um, when you get there, it's cold. This day was anyway. It was very windy. You can't see that from this picture. Well, that was a really strong, strong wind that day. And that was the destination of all the people walking. Yes, to yes. To get to that falls. Yes. Uh-huh. 
say this video or I, um, that might, let me look at my map here. Nope, that's not, that's on the eastern part also. Um, these, this, the water from these, the waterfalls coming down are so pure, some, you could drink the water. People were saying, yeah, you could drink this water, you don't need to filter it at all. Well, my experience is backpacking is I'm not even going to do that. Some people did that, though. They actually drank the water right as it's going by them, and I'm thinking, uh-huh, you don't know what's up there. Some animal, you know, well, not for me. The elevation, highest elevation on the mountain, you show it. I don't know. I, I don't know. But this, uh, th these walls right here um, are constantly eroding. <clears throat> They're not safe to climb um, because the rock is so unstable, very unstable rock. Constant movement. This is our ship in the channel. <laughs> this tugboat. <laughs> Jerry took this picture. The tugboats, obviously, we've had this tragedy with the bridge in Baltimore collapsing, uh, which shouldn't have happened, but there was electrical failure on the ship. As the story goes right now, we don't know for sure. Um, but all ships going into ports that are narrower that need to have a pilot on board or be controlled by a tugboat. And that's what this tugboat was. It uh, pulled the ship in and out of this uh, area. And he's waiting. So while he's waiting, he's just doing donuts out there <laughs> with the tugboat. Now, what's unique about this house and this house is it's made out of wood. And they made those homes in Norway and Denmark and took them apart, took them by ship to this spot and rebuilt them. So there's a very few homes that are made out of wood, but this particular city had some because it was uh, founded by uh, Norwegians and, and the, uh, from Denmark, so they brought their own homes with them. Again, the art is everywhere. Building art like this. And they're usually depicting something to do with the, the country itself or the geographical area. This church has been moved, I think, three times. Um, it's a wooden church. And the reason they have to move it is because the ground is shifting or a uh, volcano was erupting and they had to move this. And every time they moved it, the trolls would move this rock with it. <laughs> and uh, the face of that might mean something to somebody, but it, that's, that's the story they told us. We had the opportunity to go listen to this couple entertain us. It was like kind of a lunch break, a brunch maybe. And all of us went in there and they were singing their folk songs, their songs from uh, the country. And they were very good. They were just really good. Uh, at the same time, they served us up some food. And there were six people at each table and there are six different kinds of desserts, uh, one for each person there. And let me see if I wrote down what, uh, what some of that is. I did write it down, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, but they had uh, shark, um, reindeer, sheep's head. Um, so we got an opportunity to try a little bit of each of these. Uh, that's a, a homemade, uh, um, that doesn't work very well. The far, I'll look at it right here. The picture on the far left um, is a homemade cracker with, um, I think it's reindeer on top of it, and then uh, some kind of spice on top of that. 
Um, I don't have any more information on what, what they're serving here, but it's all native to the island, what they eat. And they gave us a little taste of everything that they had to eat. And of course, some of this you look at, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's like eating muskrat. Maybe, I don't think so. But they had a good beer. Yeah. There you go. So everybody had a, a bottle of beer, their own beer. And that is uh, pickled shark. That's Debbie that's eating that, I believe, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, shark, if you were to, a particular shark they were talking about, and I don't know a lot about shark, um, said that if you were to eat it as you caught it, it's poisonous. So they take the shark meat and they pickle it and they store it for six months, 12 months. Uh, and then they bring it up and they cure it and they dry it and they pickle it and, and then they eat it. So that's what, that's what uh, she has there. Did you bring a quart of home? Uh, no. I brought a quart of this home. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is their homemade um, alcohol. It's kind of like, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got to try it, just a little bit of it. It was okay. I like the beer better. Did they have garden at the cave? Very, yes. Yes, we went through a flower garden, not a vegetable garden. Now, if they have a vegetable garden, I'm not familiar with it. Perhaps. Some places do, but the soil is so bad that I don't, I don't, would rather doubt it. I think they would have to bring in the soil, put it like in a greenhouse. And I'm sure that in near large cities, they do that. So they have fresh vegetables some of the time. Um, trolls are very big. Um, these are two examples of uh, the troll Grala and her Christmas cat. And, they treat Christmas differently than we do. They have different, a different kind of holiday than we do. They, the trolls uh, eat the children. So it's, it's kind of a weird custom. Um, so what, what is like wildlife? That they have no natural predators on the island. If I remember right, um, and I think the well, is a fox a predator? Yeah. Okay, then I think that's the only animal they have is a fox, um, native to the island. And maybe I'm wrong there too. At one time I did know, but I somehow a fox sticks in my mind. So I can't tell you. So are reindeer wandering around? Or... If they are, I never saw any, uh, but they. If they're not native to the island, they were brought to the island, so they have reindeer on the island. Yeah. So they're apparently they're importing a lot of the fruit and vegetables. Yes. And yes. Yeah. A absolutely. Yeah. Uh, their main food are fish, and they have many ways of preparing fish. We had fish a lot, and it was delicious. Uh, I mean, it was our last night we were in Reykjavik. We asked the concierge, we want to go to a restaurant that's within walking distance, but uh, serve some of your local fare. And she said she had just a restaurant for us. She said, go to this restaurant and ask for this fish. And she named it. And I cannot remember that name. And nobody I've asked can remember that name of what the name of the fish was. So um, we went there and it was packed local people but they there were six of us so they had room for six of us and we all and they had that on the menu our concierge said they don't always have this fish but if they have it order it they had it we ordered it it was delicious she's she, our concierge said you might not get in the, the restaurant might be full and you'll have to go to the restaurant next to it and we said what's that called she said it's called plan b <laughs> what's the name of the restaurant Plan B. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't have to go to Plan B. 
Uh, so that, that was fun. This is a, the small boat right there, which looks like a small boat. It actually will hold almost 100 people, is what they call a tender. And as in Alpena, when Viking comes to Alpena, they, they cannot get to Alpena dock. It's too shallow. So they ship people in on the tender, uh, 80, 50 to 80 people at a time. And these are their lifeboats as well. I mean, if we ever needed a lifeboat, that's what we would get into. And they do big lifeboat drills. <clears throat> the very first day you get on the ship, they tell you exactly where your life preserve is, where you're going to go, and you do a drill. And all cruise ships do that because uh, after the Titanic, they discovered that these ships might sink. And if they sink, it would be nice to know how to save yourself. East part of the island again. This is a, a squid. Oh, we call it a starfish maybe, but a squid. And it's a mushy. Uh, there was a boy fishing and he was fishing for that and had caught that. And that was going to be a meal. I'm going to cook that. Okay. This tank right here is really unique. They, we went on this island, and we, before we went to that tank, we went to a, a rock shop, which was fascinating, but I don't have any slides of that. But this tank right here, they were leading us up to this tank. And, well, you can look at it and say, what are they taking us to? They used to uh, keep oil in that tank, fish oil, I guess. But anyway, they would keep, and they would fill it. And then they would sell it. They would uh, ships would come in and fill it, fill their ships with the oil, and um, they. But that's days gone by. So they had this huge tank sitting there, thinking, "What can we do with this? Let's make this a tourist attraction." No, that's a tourist attraction, and I kid you not, that was such a great experience. We all went into this tank, and it was a, one of these doors. You know, you open up a big tall door. You walk in, there's benches to sit on, wooden benches, not nice, comfortable seats like you have. And they shut the door, and it was total darkness, total black. And then spotlight came on this woman singing, uh, gorgeous, like a chant, and then into an aria, and just this a cappella, no, no instruments. Uh, it, and did this for about an hour. And it was, the, the acoustics in that thing were unbelievable. Beautiful, just un you would have never figured that for sure. Uh, everybody came out there with awe, just like, wow, that was so great. Again, I'm going to go one more slide. These are sculptures of eggs that are from birds that are native to Iceland. They hired a sculptor and he carve these, polish these, so that they look like the egg um, that would come from a bird. And I don't know how many there are, I've forgotten. I'll back it up one now. Somebody in our group had a stuffed puffin. It's a stuffed, you know, like bringing it home for their children, their grandchildren. Um, and they put it in front of there to take, get this picture. But you can see as far as you can, all the way along there. And they were beautiful eggs. I mean, uh, this is not such a beautiful guy here. He's a pretty cranky dude. But again, it's just to show you an example of the history of the island with trolls. They, they were really popular and still are. Some people still believe in them, even though Christianity has been on the island for many, many years. And this is, these are small homes. This, this, these are where the trolls would live. These aren't full size, this, these are miniature. And that's, they built that for the trolls. So they had places to live. Picture of just a rainbow that was behind the ship as we were sailing away. Look at Hymeny here.
This island was unique too. Um, you, you can see how the walls are just are sheer walls, and this this uh, material keeps crumbling. It's not stable. Uh, there's a, a big hole where that that's not one of our ships. That's somebody else's. They don't, nobody goes into that. Oh, I suppose you could if you had a kayak or something, and take don't mind taking chances with your life because. As I said, this material keeps crumbling and falling into the water, so it could fall on your head. So these ships go up to the opening of that, and then they turn around. We got off of that ship, and we walked along this walkway right here. Um, a bird you want to see, if you can see a bird on that island, is a puffin. Uh, puffins are hard to, hard to see up close. They're really scary or, or they you just can't get close to them they they won't let you get close to them they'll fly off and they fly like a pigeon they're really fast they're just like a bullet <clears throat> maybe a pigeon doesn't fly that fast but they kind of remind me of that we came around a corner on a platform and there were the puffins this is a picture i took and this is a live two live puffins which was very rare to get up that close we were probably 10 feet from it as, you know, with my cell phone, you don't, uh, they take good pictures, but you can't zoom in on them. Um, so we got pictures of live puffins. And this is where they live. They live in all these little holes in the side of the uh, rocks. Oh, I wanted to back it up. I wanted to ask. Uh, I screwed it up. <laughs> what do you think that is right there? That green part, nice and level, and that, uh, that's their golf course. <laughs> there's, there's the bag there. uh, that's the only golf course I saw on the island. I'm guessing they probably have one or two near Reykjavik, being a fairly large city. This is not a near Reykjavik at all. This is a little island. But this island has a music festival once a year, and they attract about 20,000 people. The people come by boat and tent, and in this um, blue covered building right here, there's some of the venues are having, they put an outdoor stadium, a big, big, big stadium up, and they have music, and they have fireworks, and they have, it's a four day happening, and every year, it's, it, tons of people go there. It's kind of like Woodstock, only on an annual basis. Now, I'm going to back up. What you have looking at is a volcano right there. That erupted. I, let me see if I have the year down. I don't. Um, Within the last 50 years, that erupted. Pardon me? 2008? That sounds right. Um, that erupted and destroyed the whole village. Just destroyed it. The lava came down fast, <clears throat> where some people never got out of there in time. Other people got on their boats and got out, but some people didn't have time. So they have this museum set up to that. And that's a picture of what it looked like as this volcano was erupting with the church in the foreground. And this is a museum. These buildings are exact buildings that were in the volcano that suffered the devastation from the flowing lava. Um, and that's the black is the residue of the lava as it came down into the homes, destroyed the homes. So that was a tragedy that happened not too long ago. So they really have monitors set up around all these volcanoes. You can see in the background there that same volcano. Uh, and that's not the only one on this island. So they have to monitor them so they can give people warning um, before it gets to them. This is unique also. Um, this is the elephant in the water. You can see it's 
it's kind of off to the far left there. And then the picture of it up closer. I'm going to skip that. But uh, let's see. I, I didn't have much on this ochery right here, but that was a long distance for the ship to come down into the city of Ockery. And we got in there. We were on a walking tour with a guide who lives there. And as we we're talking with her, found out she was the head of the ski school for a ski resort that was up in the mountains, very close to where we were. I said, how's chances of going and see your ski area? She said, and eh, she looked at the, and she said, no, it's too overcast today. Otherwise we would. Um, found out that I was ski patrol. She said, you come here. She said, you got a job. <laughs> I thought, well, I bet you I do. <laughs> I mean, who'd want to go there, right? <laughs> uh, but they, but it's a, a destination ski resort. It's a big ski resort that they get uh, clients from all the Scandinavian countries that will fly there and uh, ski there, you know, for a week at a time, kind of like our, maybe like our Vail or our Aspen or our ski resorts out west. That is the only ski resort on the island. So, okay. I think, no, I think they had an airport there near the ski resort. I'm not sure. Well, it would kind of be like an airport with a lot of snow plows. So that, you know, they get a lot of snow there. Uh, and then it has, the mountains are pretty high alongside of this. I mean, we were down in a valley and looking up at these mountains. So, yeah. Jerry and Debbie took this Iceland air, which they really loved when they went there. Um, and that's the sunset on the last day of, of uh, the voyage. Um, I'm, I'm, I know I missed a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about, but do you have any questions? Yeah, Dick? Yeah, well, uh, concerning the industry there, did you see any industry? Because... No, no. Uh, Their uh, industry is fishing, fishing and tourism now. Because I'm questioning, you know, they do everything with concrete. Uh, they don't ship the, they don't have a cement plant there or anything like that to, to ship all the cement in. No, I think they do have a cement plant there. I think they have, because they use all their um, natural materials that right. are on the island, which are good enough to make concrete cement blocks from. Yeah, so they use their natural product and they don't ex import that. But fishing is still a big part of their, actually fishing is number one industry they have. Tourism is second. Yeah. What's I think that's true. They're gonna that's something that they're gonna do once it becomes financially feasible, you know, so, so that they can make money after doing this. But I think that's in certain parts of the United States, that would be a way to go to make energy. Now, just a minute, I gotta get a drink and there is something I wanna talk about right now. There are there is an active volcano going off. Remember the one the first slides that we saw of that volcano? Well, that's gotten worse. And it's near a city and it's uh, flowing towards that city. The Blue Lagoon right now is closed. In fact, they had uh, last month, they had an eruption where the alarms went off, the sirens went off, and they had to evacuate all of the tourists that were staying at the hotel around the Blue Lagoon. They had to get them out of there. They had to evacuate the city. There's a city nearby that, I don't know how many hundreds of people live there, but they had to get everybody out of there. The road split, the lava, they, they got some major heavy equipment in there to try to divert the lava from going into the city and, and they 
successfully doing that. So it's going more towards the ocean now. Uh, but this is an active volcano that's going on right now, and they don't want any tourists going there. Uh, they you know, be crazy to do that. Uh, and I have a website that a woman who's a travel advisor, she keeps in contact with me, telling me about what's going on, uh, what's relevant today. And that, that volcano is active, and they don't want anybody near it. Because it's good. Talks about their tipping, tipping money. Oh, money so tipping. Your, what you say the resources tourism. So what are we tipping these folks to support their livelihood? I I would say probably similar to the United States, the tipping would be um, maybe less because they aren't expecting it. A lot of a lot of the. Like when we went to a restaurant, we would give 20% uh, over the cost of whatever our bill might be, which is typical for what we're doing now in the United States. Um, but they said we didn't have to do that. They said that's not something that's expected. Um, but it, that's that's much as I know about it. I don't suspect that they're very well armed over there as we are. <laughs> I really don't know that either. I would suspect you're correct. I never even saw a police officer the whole while we were there. I never saw a police car, police officer, never heard a siren. I'm sure there's crime like there is everywhere, but it's just maybe not, not as much of it. It's a really great city to go into and spend a few days. We spent four days there, and every day we did something different, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so the island itself is a great place to visit, too. Yes? Ben, did you, when you're traveling in the ship around the island, did you see any of the glaciers and any of them dabbing? No, no, uh-uh. Uh, I have seen that up in Alaska, and I've seen that in Canada, but not there, uh-uh. Because I think the mountainous area that's snow-capped is farther inland. It's not near the water, not near the edge of the ocean, sea. And do they have... Uh... Whaling industry, you know, way back, the bear bear whaling industry in and around Iceland. I don't remember that ever being talked about, but big industry because of worldwide pressures. That was in 2006. A lot of the whaling vessels were dried up. Sure. One of the things that one of the things that happened with Iceland, too, during the Second World War, the United States, along with Great Britain, looked at where can we get a airport closer to the uh, England, and the Nazis were coming towards, you know, they were going out into uh, Norway and uh, Finland and working their way. So they looked at Iceland, and they... And they um, the United States and Great Britain built a huge, huge airport in Iceland and it was a huge air base for many, many years. Uh, I don't know if it's still operational or not, but it was a big, uh, big deal before or during World War II to, to get on that island and capture it before the Nazis did. That was a big deal. So they're extremely friendly people. Just, I mean, Obviously, we're tourists, and they're going to make money from us. But they're um, it was it was a fun place. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Okay.